the largest residential solar installer just went bankrupt. That's on top of over 100 solar company failures in 2023. Why are so many businesses failing? And what does this mean for the solar industry as a whole? I'm gonna be answering those questions in today's video. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why 90% of solar companies fail. And the number one reason is they just don't have proper accounting. Now folks, a lot of folks get into the solar industry with this mindset of it's just a gold rush. There's so much money to be made. There's so much profit potential to be made. And many of the folks that get into this industry are simply not qualified to manage their businesses. And one of the areas where that's manifest uh, most frequently is in improper accounting. Now, when solar was in a constant growth mode, it was very easy to fool yourself into thinking that your business was doing better than it actually was. Uh, and I know this from personal experience. When I was in the solar business, we knew nothing but year over year growth, 50%, 100% uh, year over year revenue growth uh, throughout the entire previous decade. And depending on how you do your accounting, uh, it's very easy to uh, improperly book new sales or new contracts as income. And I know that's one of the mistakes that we made early on in the business is that whenever we would sign a new solar contract, we would enter it into our accounting system as an invoice. And therefore, whenever we ran financial reports, that was showing on our financial statement as income, even if all the work necessary to complete that contract had not yet been performed. So this is one other mistake. Now, the next potential pitfall is the illusion of the M1 advances. Now, when we talk about an M1 advance, this is typically a, a deposit or an advance that a solar finance company pays to the contractor in advance of the work actually being performed on the project. Now, ostensibly, these M1 advances are used to cover engineering and permitting costs and to help with the purchase of materials so that the contractor can complete the solar project. But the danger with the M1 advances is that, uh, again, it, it can allow you to fool yourself into thinking that you have more available cash than you actually do. And so when those advances come in, typically that's going to show as cash on the contractor's operating bank account. Uh, but again, if you don't have a proper restricted reserves for future project expenses and material costs, it could fool you into thinking you have more free cash than you actually do. Now folks, this is the exact problem I found myself in when I was in the contracting business back in 2018, 2019. We put together a sales team, we brought on five sales closers and our sales started accelerating at an exponential rate. And so the first thing we noticed was, wow, there's a lot more cash coming into and flowing through the business. And although our sales started to take off and our cash deposits started to increase at a rapid rate of speed, the speed at which we were able to actually complete the installations didn't keep up. And that's ultimately where we had to restructure our business is when our financing partner came in and said, look, Joe, you're taking in too many, too many new additional uh, deposits on new contracts. The amount of closeout payments or final payments are not keeping up, i.e. you don't have the capacity to meet the demand or to meet the volume at which your sales team is selling. And so we have to do something to close that gap. So this is another problem that solar contractors find themselves with is they see a lot of cash coming into the business, but without having enough set aside to make sure that they can close out all the open projects, they can get themselves into trouble. The third main reason that contractors fail is they don't properly plan for long-term warranty service expense. Now folks, the way solar is being sold and offered in the United States right now is typically the installation comes with a 25 year guarantee, including 25 years of, of repair service if needed, as well as 25 years of electric power production guarantee. However, if the contractor doesn't properly plan for and set aside cash for future warranty service expense, um, i.e. the cost of sending a technician back out there to replace a defective solar panel or a defective inverter, if they don't have that cash set aside and then those expenses spring up in the future unexpectedly, this is another reason that can lead to contractor business failure. Uh, and things had gotten so competitive in the solar market that these solar contractors, these EPCs, were trying to undercut cut each other in terms of install cost. And again, a lot of times these long-term expenses were overlooked. And that's a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, Solar Insure. If you're considering installing a solar and battery storage system for your home, then there's no better way to protect your investment than Solar Insure. Solar Insure is the leading solar warranty provider that gives you total system protection for 30 years. The program covers all major system components, including solar panels, racking, inverters, and optimizers. 
Roof penetrations are also guaranteed for 30 years. And the warranty includes labor, so you're covered even if the contractor who does your initial installation goes out of business. So if you're serious about protecting your solar and storage investment, then tell your contractor you want Solar Insure. Or go directly to the Solar Insure website so you can learn more about the program. Thank you, Solar Insure, for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, continuing on that note, another problem that contractors make that cause business failures is they just price themselves out of the game. Whenever you get into this price war, it becomes a race to the bottom. And the problem is that if you price the installation too low, you don't leave yourself adequate margin to actually do quality work and then have a profit left over at the end of the day. Uh, and yes, folks, ultimately business is about making a profit. If the contractor can't make a profit, they have no incentive to stay in business. But the other problem with pricing the jobs too cheap is that it leads to poor quality work. Either they're using poor quality equipment and or they're doing poor quality work. Now we've seen this with a number of contractors, particularly in Florida, where there were such a high rate of roof leaks and roof damage that home insurance companies just started dropping homeowners that installed solar panels on their home. So when you're working with a cheap contractor or the contractor has such small margins, a lot of times they're forced to cut corners, they're forced to rush through the job, which could manifest in major problems on your home, like leaking roofs uh, and in, in a few handful of rare cases, electrical fires as well. Um, this actually became one of the key talking points with the Florida Homeowners Insurance Association was just how many homes had been damaged from improper solar installation. So that's the other thing that leads to solar business failures. By the way, if you had a solar power system installed and it caused a roof leak or other damage to your home, leave a comment down below. We'd like to hear from you. So what can we expect going forward? Well, I'm afraid to say, I think we're going to see more business failures. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on Titan Solar Power, which was the, the largest residential US solar installer and how they went bankrupt, go back and watch that previous video. Uh, but I think this is just the tip of the iceberg of some of these large installers that that were on shaky financial ground. And when these large installers go out of business, it's not just their customers and employees that are affected, it's the sales organizations that may be selling on their behalf. It's also the subcontractors, because many of these larger nationwide uh, contractors are using subcontractors to actually do the local physical work. So that means the sales orgs, the, the individual sales representatives, the subcontractors, many of these people are not gonna be getting paid. Now, a lot of pressure is also gonna fall onto the solar finance companies. And the reason is because there are gonna be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of homeowners out there that have malfunctioning solar systems that were installed by defunct contractors. A lot of those homeowners are gonna call the finance company and demand that they send somebody to repair the solar panel system if they wanna to continue to make loan payments. And so I think the finance companies are gonna come under a lot of pressure here and why I personally don't think dealer fees are gonna be coming down anytime soon. Now, the other thing I expect to see is more consolidation in the industry, particularly with the finance companies getting more involved with operations and maintenance, uh, meaning that the finance companies taking on the burden of having to service and maintain and keep healthy these solar power systems that they financed over these long terms of 15, 20, or 25 years. So I do expect some consolidation. I also expect to see more consolidation on the installer side, whereas some of the larger nationwide installers made heavy use of subcontractors. I think what you're gonna see is more of a return to the vertically integrated in-house model where you have a contractor that's doing the work with its own employees. Uh, and again, these may be smaller contractors that aren't trying to be in you know, all these different states. I think many of the, the most successful contractors in today's environment are companies that stayed relatively small. They stayed focused on, on certain geographies, maybe one or two states, or in the case of California, maybe just one or two metropolitan areas so that they could physically stay close to where the work and where the future warranty service needs to be done. And then finally, I think you're gonna see more government regulation in the space. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that we've had it as easy as we had for so long in solar, where you could literally walk into a homeowner's house, get instant approval for solar financing of $100,000 or $125,000, and do all of the document signing electronically with, with little or no human in the loop. 
to provide quality control, uh, or at least to, to verify identities and just make sure everything was being done above board. And of course, a lot of these solar systems and a lot of these solar loans are sold based on the premise that the system is going to perform for you over the next 25 years. And of course, if the contractor that's supposed to keep that system healthy goes out of business, there's a big mismatch in expectations here. So I expect more regulation, uh, more consumer protection from the government uh, as the solar industry matures and we, we sort of digest all the implications of what we've experienced over the past year. Well, folks, as always, if you get good value from the videos that you see here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage so you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of evaluating solar power or battery storage options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote from a reliable contractor, or maybe you already have a quote, you need to get a comparison. As always, you can reach out to us on the link below here, set up a call with a solar expert, or just use the free online quote tool so you can see how much solar and storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.